Because you're eating a Hot Pocket? No, because I'm sitting here telling you to fucking push the go button. Do they eat what? Hot Pockets in space? Uh, no, maybe it was the first guy. Man, you talk so loud. <laughs> Sorry, I'll take it from the back. Have I met Silas before? No, you just before? need to not yell. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Has anybody met Silas before? I have. You have a really nice microphone. Thank you. Do you compose music? Video I do. offers a rich oh, and cool. on. way to connect with your audience. Sorry. And grow your business. <laughs> and now, with Jesus I know. Oh, God. I know how to use my computer. <laughs> <laughs> Silas is a musician. I have his CD. Oh really? That's cool. Do you have like stuff I can listen to? Yeah, you can check me out on iTunes actually, and then I have like my, that's my original stuff, and then I have uh, stuff on like I do covers on YouTube, so. Cool. I'm making you sign my CD when you come back. Yeah, I'll, I'll check out your channel. So I'm actually really excited about the YouTube section of today's agenda. Because mm -hmm. I look at the agenda. Oh. <laughs> like a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically everyone except for Matt. Speak so anyway, this is the uh, Council Cast number 8 for the week of March 26th, uh, where we will talk about games, tech, and bullshit. So, so far, I messed up our schedule. So far, Matt doesn't look at scheduling like always. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I was at work until 8.45. And that's my problem? No! I was with coworkers until 8 o'clock. You fucking call work and tell them I got a podcast to do. I will. I will write them a note for you. <laughs> a Dr. Blade say. note? I will say Dr. Blaine says you have to go to your podcast. <laughs> Doctor's so, note. So in any case, uh, I, I don't know. Not a whole lot happened this week. I Most of the stuff that I have for this week is actually saved over from last week. Uh, but a lot of it's still pretty interesting. I guess one of the... I'll just start at the top. Uh, did you guys hear about uh, the Jeff Be Bezos... And his recovery of the Apollo capsules. Yep. Matt. <laughs> I thought that was the best one. They sunk. They 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 didn't know they sunk. No. So. so when, in any case, basically, the Apollo rockets launched, and they had the uh, bottom portion of them, the booster rocket part, basically everything except the capsule. Uh, would drop off once the capsule ejected. And I guess Bezos, I don't know why no one did this before, but he decided he was just going to go find them in the bottom of the ocean and did. I thought you said he was going for the capsule, not the pieces that... No, he went for the rockets. But then don't say he's going to retrieve the capsule when the capsule's already retrieved. Did I say he retrieved the capsule? You did, actually. Yeah, you did. Oh, I meant... I, I meant rockets. This is actually rockets. extremely relevant because I started watching uh, when we went, when we left Earth again last night, and that's why I was talking about the Mercury astronauts earlier. But oh, was did they talk about Bezos? No, <laughs> <laughs> they did not. <laughs> oh. did, did Bezos fund the uh, Mercury missions? No, he, this, this this is an Elon Musk. <laughs> Speaking of, actually, uh, the Dragon capsule came back to Earth, I think, what, last, yesterday or something like that? Or today? Is he retrieving the, ca is he retrieving the pieces of the rocket just because? Yeah. I, uh, he's doing it, but he's putting them in, like, a, some sort of museum or something like that. Like, a, he's taking them and making them into art and then putting them into an art museum. I guess it depends where it fell, because the one capsule yes, from was. Mercury that sunk sunk in, like, three miles of ocean. Well, yeah, I'm sure they can't get all of them back, but he was, uh... He got... I don't remember how much he got, but he wow. got a couple of them so far. Wow. Hey. Thankfully, he's okay, you know. Um... Yeah, it looks like they went down to a depth of more than 14,000 feet. Holy shit. This is like 2.4 miles. That's a lot of feet. <laughs> it's a lot of feet. 
Um, they're bringing home enough major components to fashion displays of two of the flown F1 engines. I wish I had a lot of money. Yeah, I wouldn't be recovering the Apollo. <laughs> I don't know. If, if I had enough, it might be something fun to do. Yeah, if I had $23.2 billion in net worth, I, I'd probably go dig up crap, too. <laughs> I'd dive, I'd dive to the bottom of the ocean just to see what's going on down there. I might not even bring something back up. I'd take pictures. Man. And then it's I would... really goddamn dark. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's isn't that what James Cameron did? He's like, hmm, I've got a lot of money. Yeah, pretty much. And yeah, I want to go to the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to take a ton of pictures. <laughs> Everyone else is going into space. I'm going to go into the ocean to get stuff from outer space. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Exactly. So, if uh, Bezos is the awesome CEO of Amazon, the not-so-awesome CEO of EA uh, stepped down last week. Finally. Probably because SimCity was such a terrible launch. <laughs> I don't know if it was only because of that. Probably because he created Origin. Pro that's probably why. <laughs> Did anyone pick up SimCity other than Darren? No. I've been playing... Uh, I picked up Tropico instead. I've been conquering islands. I wonder how how much Tropico's sales have boosted. Dude, it was seven fifty on sale. Yeah, that I... was the best part of it. Is SimCity was having the rough <laughs> launch, and <laughs> up on the Steam front page, it was like, "Oh look, Tropico's on sale." <laughs> it was. It, I I spent seven fifty, and then I went ahead and dumped like twenty hours into the game in two days. Is it really? Is it that good? <laughs> It's actually pretty awesome. It's way? more... It, it's it's different from, like... I don't know, I've never played SimCity or anything like that, but it's different oh. from the fact that you don't really do... I don't know. It doesn't seem like you do as much city-city planning, but, like, you're more or less setting up an island. You're given an island, and you're saying, okay, you need to do this, you need to do that, and you're given a bunch of tasks to do. And so, like, you have to. Pr you also have to provide for your workers. So, like, one island, the goal was to kind of like, I basically just set up to strip mine the entire island. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. This is this is Sim City or this is Octagon or whatever. Tropico. You were. Tropico. Yeah, that too. So, <laughs> so like, I started the island and I was given a bunch of cash and I, they're like, here, you're supposed to go mine the island. And I'm like, okay, so I start placing some mines, and then you have to build up, you know, housing, and you have to provide electricity to the housing so that your workers are happy, and you can, like, increase the pay of your workers at each location. Uh, you need, like, a port to ship stuff in and out of. But you can be as nice or as mean to your workers. You could be, like, a person that everybody loves on your island, or you could just be an overall dictator on your island. And have everyone mad at you and just work them to death. It's I, li I liked that aspect. Of, <laughs> did, did anybody ever play Black and White or Black and White Two ever? I no. never even heard of it. God damn it! <laughs> it, it, it was a uh, what's his face Peter. Which how do you one? say his Molin? I don't know how to say his last name. Oh, like Molyneux or how yeah. do you say it? That, that was one of his creations by, I th I'm pretty sure it was Bullfrog, or no, it was Lionhead Studios who did that one. And it, it's like it's like a, you're, it, it's a god sim game. Okay. And I just liked, I, I remember playing it when I was younger, like, too young to figure the freaking thing out anyway. So, what did you do in it? You could build, you, you you could have like these temples and stuff, and like, I can't really remember, you could have it, like if you needed more uh, resources for something, I don't remember, you could have people go, uh, I think it was like resources to do your spells or something with, you could like send your workers to go uh, 
worship at the temple, and it would uh, up that stuff. And if you made sacrifices, so you could like pick up each individual person and just like chuck them into the sacrificial thing, and it would sacrifice them, and it would spike your stuff. But the people would become insanely scared of you. One of my favorite things to do was at like the granary, like if people were trying to eat. I would just take up all the food and throw it in the sacrificial thing when they were trying to fucking eat. <laughs> That actually does sound a lot very similar to Tropico, where you can pretty much do whatever you want. Uh, like I said, you can just be a total dick to all of your people if you want to, but... Sounds like a game for Lord Mordor. <laughs> <laughs> I need to reboot that thing, start it back up, <laughs> set my name and go to town. <laughs> yeah, it, and the worst part is, like, I would start building a city, and... Uh, after not too long, it would just be like, all right, you're done with whatever you were supposed to do in this quest or in this map, but you could keep playing if you wanted to. So I probably spent like 12 hours on my first island, even though I finished it in like four. So do you do you have to micromanage stuff? Like in SimCity, you have to do a whole bunch of shit. Like you have to place the roads strategically. Yeah. Uh, not so much power lines anymore, from what I understand, but old Zim City, you had to lay the power lines, the uh, water, the you have to do the individual zoning for sections that you want to be, like, commercial. So, you can change taxes and shit. So there's, uh, so you start out the game and you're given, like, you have your mansion because you're the dictator, and you're given, like, a couple, a couple small roads and then a construction building and a teamster building. And the construction building, like, is where all your workers go. That's how you have workers to build all of your additional buildings. And then you have uh, your teamsters who move your items. Like, they have they provide cars and transport goods and stuff like that. Uh, so you have to actually, you do have to lay the roads, but there's no zoning or anything. So you can just build whatever you want, wherever you want. Um... But you do have to lay roads, and obviously, if you have a, people can walk to wherever they need to go. But if you have roads, they can drive there, so it's a lot faster for them to get their work done. And you have to provide power, but the power power kind of works in a radius. Uh, it doesn't travel along anything. There's no sewers you have to lay. Um, you do have to create like garbage dumps and power other nuclear power and you can build airports and you can build you have to build churches to keep religious people happy and stuff like that is there what are like and you also what are, what are some of the goals is there an end game or is it basically just yes. build your island as much as you can so and so you can also micromanage like down to the point of like each building each factory or farm or whatever you have working you can increase or decrease a person's pay and that will affect how many people are working there, which will affect your output of that building. Um, but the goals that you have are like, oh, export X amount of dollars to Europe because you have trades, you can trade with all the different countries. It's all done automatically. But like different countries will request different things. Like you'll they'll say increase your output of uh, resources to the Middle East by. 1500 units or something like that and so it'll say the Middle East wants oil and coffee and tobacco or something like that See I think that aspect of it I'd really enjoy like the diplomacy Yeah so you know what I mean? you, and, Have you ever played and, Civilization Pat? I have not I've been told I shouldn't Shouldn't? because Shouldn't because you would it'll like it too much and life. want to play all the time? <laughs> yes yeah, because it's all about like diplomacy and backstabbing people and choosing who you want to ally with and allying well, with them and then like taking their city away from them right away. I, I don't mean that so much as like what Blaine was talking about sounded a little more realistic. Yeah, I mean, kind of. are you telling me history didn't happen, Pat? <laughs> well, <laughs> people don't invade other countries. Oh, yeah? As much these days. <laughs> Unless you're the U.S., I guess. Well, no, but you don't... It's not... You, you start in, like... You start in, like, feudal systems and shit, and so... So, the, the thing is, like, in Tropico, you have... Uh, the main two superpowers that you work with are the U.S. and uh, the USSR. 
So you can pick, you can like issue edicts to align yourself with one or the other, and like I said, you can export goods uh, to a to a specific country to get better standing with them. And you have like a log that keeps track of your standing within different <laughs> political groups on the island, as well it as the different It sounds to me countries. like you're basically Cuba. <laughs> you, you basically <laughs> are. The U.S. The USSR. You're on an island. The guy even looks a little bit like Castro. Well, you can you can pick any person you want, any avatar you want. Oh. They initially wanted to call the game Cuba, but for obvious legal reasons, they couldn't. <laughs> But speaking of Civ, so I played Tropico for two days, and Dave was like, oh, you only got like 14 hours in it. Or he's like, oh, you have 14 hours in it? I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, you have like 20 in the same amount of time. And he's like, oh, whoops. <laughs> 20 and what? So wait. Civ. He played Civ 5. Oh, isn't, he did. Isn't yeah. like the cover for Tropico like a picture of Fidel in his 20s? Basically. That's why I said you're Cuba. Yeah, the the main character, the main character, the main like people who talk to you are definitely like communist dictators. You can be Fidel and you could be, um, like Che Guevara and stuff like that. We should um, make a we should make a again? parody game. It's not. I know I said that wrong, but called Best Korea. <laughs> 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 the only thing we choose is how much to uh, uh, how much how much to posture yourself against the rest of the world, and then there would be a slider on how much you want to starve people that goes from a lot to a lot more. <laughs> the objective of the game is to see what percentage of the population you can militarize. <laughs> <laughs> remember, remember, North Korea has like one of the largest armies in the world. They can't supply it, but they have the largest <laughs> army. I just love reading that they have like 600 jets, but they don't have any fuel. So they could throw the jets at us. I'm just, I'm imagining if if, if, if somebody invaded, they don't have any. <laughs> It's, there's not enough fuel to fucking fly their fleet, so the jets are just sitting there like on the tarmac, just <laughs> like shooting missiles. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> there's like a bunch of dudes just pushing the rockets to get them to take off because they can't fly them with rocket oh fuel. <laughs> they just use the jets as. Like tur turrets, they just sit there and use the machine guns. Except hey, it only gets to point forward. Hey, yep. if you don't don't forget the best Korea, they came up with uh, a calculator today. It's some new advanced uh, military technology. Oh, the picture is ridiculous. <laughs> I, honestly, though, I'm not convinced. You know, I know North Korea has nuclear power. I'm not convinced they're capable of delivering a payload across well, an you, ocean. You like, and everybody else. I'm not convinced they can get it to South Korea. I, I don't think anybody truly believes they could take a nuclear warhead, shove it on the end of whatever uh, uh, ding rocket, dong rocket they left. got, <laughs> <laughs> and launch it all the way to the U.S. Well, but remember, they did put something into space. Granted, it fell out of space, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, that's where all their fuel went. <laughs> They did put something into space. <laughs> Is that the thing that Jeff Bezos found? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, well, hold on. Let's let's test your aerospace engineering skills. Oh, what, what's easier, blasting it into space? Not necessarily orbit, but blasting something into space or blasting something all the way from North Korea to the U.S.? To get it, you space typically would launch it that thing. far. It's going to go into space anyway or near yeah, space. Yes, it would. Right, but you have to be able to pinpoint it and direct it. No, it's that's they don't have rude. satellites to you know. <laughs> it's like, oh, have you have you ever seen the XKCD Upgoer Five schematic? Please tell me you have. No. Oh, it's how I imagine the North Korean <laughs> space program. I'll find it. <laughs> oh my god. 
<laughs> basically, you could you wouldn't have to have a satellite to guide it. If North Korea knew it approximately where they wanted to hit, they could, <laughs> the U.S. That's what they, they could, want. <laughs> they could approximately aim it in that direction. It, it fucking hits out in like nowhere, Montana. <laughs> Well, I mean, you could write a code to just do a completely automated rocket. And like you said, to get yeah. within a couple of states of where they want. <laughs> yeah, it would they be hit, like a couple they of hit North Dakota. <laughs> so the truth is, this up on the, screen. the truth is, when they hit, this was years ago, they hit that South Korean, uh, I don't think it was like a bow cruiser, but it was a naval vessel. Yeah. Does anybody remember that? Wait, are you, are you talking about the one they stole of ours? No, they didn't steal anything. They actually sh like shot a missile and like hit some South Korean ship. Uh, you guys don't remember this? It's like this no. huge scandal because they denied it. I'm, oh, I'm, maybe. I'm wondering if they accidentally hit it. Like they were <laughs> trying. <laughs> and they just like accidentally killed it. People. <laughs> There's a misfire. They they meant to go to space. <laughs> they hit the <laughs> Terrible shot. <laughs> hey guys, I think we missed where we were aiming. <laughs> oh my God. We need a better calculator. Here, add a logic type trackball to it. <laughs> Alright. Oh Enough making fun of the unfortunate country. Of the best Korea, the best country in the world. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> back to city building games. Um, <laughs> Minecraft. That's Minecraft not city building. Have you? Do you guys remember when we played Minecraft like a bunch, and then we just quit? Yeah, I remember like, we played as, for like three weeks straight. As soon as it hit beta, we were like, yeah, we're done with this. <laughs> like, as soon as we had to actually do real stuff in the game and didn't have unlimited weapons. I think it was pretty much at the point that they added uh, health bars. Yeah. And, and you could and, die. <laughs> and when they added the ability for your pickaxes to not be infinite by default. That was unfortunate. That really chapped my played, ass. I've never Minecraft. Minecraft like said, was pretty legit. It, it was pretty awesome. Hop in, it was funnier when Brian's there. Because you create <laughs> stuff like the Nazi castle from hell, and it's hilarious. I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm right in saying that we all often worry about how Minecraft could possibly make any money. The poor folks that Mahjong must be starving, freezing and wearing <laughs> each other's skins as thermal underwear by now. <laughs> What? This is from the article. Right, oh, Minecraft. Okay. So, so Minecraft, as you know, it, it sells for like what twenty bucks or something like that. It I don't even know how much. So many copies. They sold a billion copies. They've made so much money that they're now going to offer a subscription plan for ten to fifteen dollars per month. But get this, it's for kids. What? So if you're a parent and you want to let your kid play Minecraft. What the fuck is this? Pat, I think that was... Not me. What? Oh, there. <laughs> no I, th I think a train just hit us. <laughs> Alright. What the hell is that? What is what? That... <laughs> That's North I think, Korea. I think, it, I think it was you, Matt. I don't hear it. Must be Pat. I, I have no idea. M mute yourself quick, Pat. Oh, yes. yeah, it's oh, Pat. Yeah. Him. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, my guess, Pat, try your, uh, make sure you're white. Oh, there. Oh. You got oh, it. Yeah. See you later, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone. He's still gone. <laughs> it's not Snowflake. It's not Snowflake. Oh, try, uh, try making sure the wire isn't touching, like the wire from your whatever you're using for your mic, or is your mic it's built in, in your computer? Built in. Oh. Power did that do it? 
Is it the fan from the bathroom? Uh, it it the bathroom? sounds like a Could fan. Be. I'll just mute myself and I'll unmute when I talk. No, it's uh... So, in any case, Minecraft is going to offer a subscription service where you can actually play on a, like, legit curated server. Hmm. <laughs> like, when you say, do you mean, like, moderated? Yeah. Like, so it's safe for kids? Right. So people aren't building like huge blocky dicks and stuff. So so yeah, the point is that if you if you want your kid, if you are such a horrible parent that you want to just give your kid a Minecraft subscription and say go and don't want them to see giant dicks. <laughs> or, or Nazi castle. You get far enough away, it doesn't look so pixelated anymore. <laughs> wow, that's just like porn in the nineties. <laughs> You, you could pay ten. They don't have it set up quite yet, but I guess they're shooting for like ten to fifteen dollars a month, uh, and you can pay and play. Holy it on a, shit, that's expensive! I know, just to play Minecraft. Yeah, you can, get your get your kids some fucking blocks, dude. Last time I checked, <laughs> they've got my ten to fifteen dollars. You can get a, con a container of Legos, and they can just build forever. Get freaking Lincoln logs. He'll build himself a nice forest home. Last time I checked, you could play Minecraft by yourself, though, too. Yeah. So, I guess I don't really see why you need to pay. Well, they want to build worlds. They, they want little worlds built. Do you still have our Minecraft server, Blaine? We could show that off. <laughs> no. My, my <laughs> guess is... My guess is it's, it's, it's uh, child labor, where the children pay them. And so they're actually building a giant universe with these kids' help <laughs> so that they can set up a new game within, and with, within the game genius. and have a map. So they like the kids built all the maps for us, they did all the labor, <laughs> and they paid us. You, you, you know Blaine's going to tag like uh, Notch in this video, and he's going to watch it later and be like, we have to kill this kid. He knows <laughs> <too much." laughs> Yeah. I do, in fact, still have our Minecraft world. The unfortunate thing is I don't think a lot of it works because I haven't updated it in forever. No! So I'm not exactly mm -hmm. sure if a lot of the things we had working were, would work anymore. Sad day. I like just remember, my... I, I, shout out to Ryan Thurman here because you'll know he'll watch it. <laughs> do you remember the sign for the cow we corralled down there and then it went missing <laughs> and he said, son of a bitch, the imaginary cow or something like that? Yes. Yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> I remember trying to push chickens and stuff down the huge ass well. I remember when we made a uh, Justin Bieber sacrifice pit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then Ryan's tree farm. <laughs> Ryan's tree farm. And I think someone set it on fire once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was the, that was the UFO hovering. It came through oh. and burned everything. Oh my! Oh yeah, that's that's what it was. The like on uh, Mars attacks when the UFO lights the cows on fire. <laughs> <laughs> the cows are fucking running down the street. That was awesome. That game was a ton of fun. But once you started being able to die, it was no more fun. Yeah, I'm sure that's a config you can set on your server. I think I could probably. I think. It was, I just never bothered to pay any attention to it because we never needed to do it at the time we played. You're the best server admin ever. I run lots of servers. I also have a Counter-Strike Go server. You do? Yeah, and a Left 4 Dead 1 and 2 server. I do, just we don't play anymore. I never played Go ever. Don't you have it? Yeah. You just never played it? Right. No. <laughs> I played a few rounds of gun game. Dude, Go is good, man. It is good. I thought it was okay. The first round or the few rounds of gun game I played. Maybe you can see if John will play it. Take what it else you got? What do we got? Well, my, my biggest issue with Go is like, there's nothing new. It's just the same game. I can go play new games that are innovative and more exciting. That's true. But wasn't it just supposed to... I mean, wasn't this just supposed to take the place of Source for people and 
kind of fill in and help people that haven't jumped from 1.6 to jump to go, or are they not doing that still? I don't know. I have no idea. They're, we're going to have matchmaking and stuff, but it's not good. Yeah, the matchmaking wasn't very good. I don't I found it really easy to jump into not having played uh, CSS or 1.6. I enjoyed it, but... And I think that's probably what they were going for, is just to get probably old people to buy the new one and new people to get into it. Uh, so next, anyway. Uh, do you want to talk about the new Xbox rumors or the Galaxy S4? Hmm. Hmm. Xbox. Yeah, Xbox would be okay. I wish Lucas was here for this, but he's a bitch. Yeah. I, Sorry, every, Lucas. Every he's... week... I invite him, and he tentatively accepts. The biggest thing I want to know <laughs> for the new Xbox is if they're going to continue to support X and A. Like, can I develop a game and launch it? On I was pretty store? sure I was reading that X and A was kind of on the way out anyway. That's kind of the feeling right now, but nobody really has said mm. that from Microsoft. That's why people want to know are they going to release um, a new version of the new X and A? I guess I don't know. There's gonna I, be, there's gonna have to be something that can be relatively easily developed in, so people can still build the Xbox Live Marketplace stuff. Unless true. it's so ingrained into Windows culture that it's welcome to the Windows Store and you can download all these Metro games, which suck. Well, I don't I don't think that's gonna be the case though, because I Microsoft for a long time has really kind of purposely separated the Xbox brand from the rest of their Windows brand. I mean, I bet a lot of people probably don't even know that Microsoft makes the Xbox. No, I think that's, <laughs> I think that's going away, Blaine, because if you, the first time you install Windows 8, you get a live tile for, for Xbox, Xbox music. games. And yeah. games, yeah. And you can do the think, Xbox Glass stuff or well, whatever the hell it's called now. They're, they're merging them, but... I, I think we'll there's some convergence... But I think that the Xbox stuff is still going to be strictly games, I think. And that's why you see Xbox games uh, and Xbox music, because that's sort of their multimedia side of things, where Windows is still their, this is a computer, this is a desktop side of things. You might see some convergence where, yeah, you play your Xbox games on a Windows computer, but you're not going to have your Windows apps on an Xbox. We'll see. Yeah. I don't know. I could see some convergence, though, especially with Metro in particular. When are they saying it's supposed to be out? Uh, I would still assume it's... I think they're planning to announce it uh, at E3. Is so are they going to be doing Christmas of this year, probably? I, they would be stupid to not have it out before Christmas. Because it isn't the PlayStation... No, it's not. PlayStation right 4. <laughs> Sony said that they are going to have it out, but they still don't have a final design, nor a device. <laughs> they haven't shown off anything but a controller. Question, what is this whole arm feature? Because that makes me wonder, this always on feature, because that's how the surface is designed and how Windows 8 is really designed. They don't want you shutting it down. They want you to have it on all the time. The so always, it? It's going to be suspended to just flash memory. So there's a couple different things. This, this always-on feature Installs. that they're talking about is actually the game installs. It's an always-online uh, feature where the rumor wow. is that the Xbox is going to, you, like, you can buy a game on disc, or the game will also be available on the Xbox Marketplace. Xbox Marketplace. But they're going to force you to actually install the game to your hard drive. Like, you won't be able to play the game off the disc like you can on the 360 right now. But you'll be forced to install it to your hard drive, which will force your box to be connected to the internet in order to play it. What if you live in the middle of nowhere and have no internet and want to have an Xbox and play a game of FIFA? Then you're screwed. Are you fucking Too kidding bad. me? Oh, this better not be the case. I don't know. I don't know. There's so many people with internet now, even in the middle of nowhere, that I, I think they're banking on it not being a big deal. 
I agree. I don't think but it's it is a big, a big deal. deal. Like, if you don't have mean, an internet connection, go play with The Rock. W- w- exactly. Okay, so <laughs> just for example, so when we do console lands, if everybody brings their console and shit, you're not necessarily just br- plugging them in and playing against each other. You're just sitting there and playing four player on the box. No, if you want to do if you want to do if you want to do a land party, bring your Xbox 360. <laughs> yes. What if I want to play FIFA 17? Too bad. Then just sit at home and play each other. <laughs> Set up a Google Hangout and you can BS on there while you're playing FIFA Nobody's 17. Nobody show up. <laughs> <laughs> So, I guess, I don't know, I'm rereading this article, and I guess it's not, it sounds more like it's not going to be an always, like, you have to be online to play, like, um, like SimCity or, like, Diablo 3 was. It's kind of reading more like it's going to require you to actually be online to activate the game for the first time. Jesus. So, okay, but they want they want that so that they're not they're not stealing it, right? Wasn't that the right? It it's so that you're not sharing your you can't sell used copies is the idea. And Fuck you can't that. Share your games and you can't transfer your games. All that stuff. So pit. So when you when you buy a new game, you don't have to authenticate the first time online. That's what it sounds like. The so multiplayer portion. Or the single, can I sell you the single player portion? So Matt, can you sell me the single player version portion of your Half Life game? No, but that's just kind of something. <laughs> Except. So you're gonna see a lot of people in like Panera activating their Xbox games. <laughs> Probably. Right, here, here's what's gonna be GameStop. It's not gonna sell disc copies. You just bring your Xbox in. <laughs> and they're the game on for you. Dude, if I How was many- GameStop and fucking all these used games yeah. places, I would be trying to sue the shit out of Microsoft. Why? So, because well, they're going to go out it, of fucking business. Exactly. Who cares? It's not Microsoft's you, fault. Dude, you can't seriously think they could sue over that. They're just, just going to have to get innovative. It's kind of like the newspaper industry. No, Matt, you know, you're right. You're right. McDonald's oh my should God. sue Pizza Hut for delivering pizzas. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's the same. It is the same. Not just Pizza Hut, Matt. Oh, it's a fucking pizza. The funny thing is you laugh about taking your Xbox into, uh, like, a Panera or into a GameStop or something. The funny thing is I actually did that. Uh, not with an Xbox, but when I was living at home and this always online internet shit, I didn't have enough bandwidth or data to download games. So whenever I wanted to play a game, I had to take my laptop wow. to town, either to my girlfriend's house or to a coffee shop or something, sit there for the however long two hours it was for me to download a 20 Yikes. gigabyte game. <laughs> and then I brought it home, transferred it back to my desktop, had just enough internet for Steam to validate it, and then it said, all right, you're good to go. And then I had right. to take I, I'm Steam not offline. done with this. You don't get to pick and choose. It, <laughs> if, I can't sell this, <laughs> if I can't sell my used copies of my games, I can't sell you any of these books I have up on my shelf. Any of these hardcover books, it should be fucking illegal for me to sell you these. You right. already read them. I the agree with you, Matt. should disappear. I agree with you, Matt. But it's a Kindle. If they're going to digitize it, then they can force you. So you can't Be- sell your Kindle. Yeah, you books can't sell the Kindle people. books. And what they'll probably that's okay now is because it's digital. Yes, it is. Well, what they'll probably yes, what they'll probably me. do is they'll probably set up something similar to what Kindle has because if you if you buy like right now I don't own a Kindle but I have the Kindle app on my uh, i my my iPod and my iPhone and my Mac. So I have the same book on all three of those things. And if I were to ever sell my iPod, I can wipe it clean, but I still own the books. So they'll probably have some kind of... Well, you don't own the book. You have access to the book. (laughs) I own the digital copy of the book. Don't take that away from me. (laughs) That right there is the key issue. So are we 
just trying to dump used markets all together? Nah. No, I think I don't a trade want to. off. It's a trade off. If you want the digital copy, then you have to give up the ability to trade. And your digital copy is cheaper than a new copy. <laughs> in, in, the terms, <laughs> in the terms of a book specifically, but games, because you still are selling media games that can be sold and traded, they're selling they're saying, well, we'll charge you the same. Nah, you can't sell your half life copy to somebody. Why You're correct, and I that? think it's bullshit that I cannot. Why? So okay, so say I'm like I, I've got this copy. I don't want this anymore. I'm never gonna play this game again. I mean, I mean, I do play Half Life, but say it's some game that I'm never gonna play again, and I'm like, oh well, this person over here can get joy from it, but they don't care enough to go pay the fifty dollars that it still costs ten years later from EA. <laughs> <laughs> We gotta use cars. <laughs> it's not the same because it's not digital, right? Well, look at a Prius. I don't know. You're not gonna download a car and drive it, are you, Matt? I fucking Dude. download all the cars. I, guess I don't have an issue. Car. I don't have an issue with the model because I don't. I don't buy used games. I do. I I don't buy used games either. I mean. Patrick's a purist. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't have a console. I don't have a console, really. So. <laughs> it's, I, I guess the thing that... My, my biggest thing is like, well, okay, if you're going to rip away the used market, the digital copy that you're peddling me better be fucking cheaper than what the other one is. But they're trying to... For, so I don't understand why they try to discourage the used. Because all these people that... They're not are only it. buying yeah. it because it's cheaper because it's used. They're leveraging the non-existence of a trade market to increase profits because although not everyone that would have bought a used copy, which by the way they see zero dollars of, correct? As I mean, some percentage duh. of those people are going to go buy new copies. Well, will will there be an option for an uninstall? What you mean? For you, what? Well, like so, so like you, re it's registered. It's registered under your name. You have the disc, and you have it registered, and then you uninstall it from your system, and then you can sell the disc. Right. Why? So, why can't I deactivate my copy of Half Life against my Steam account, and then give it to the? Because it's already been paid for. As long as one copy, only that copy, has been paid for, and somebody's using it, then what's the difference? Aside from the fact of we just want that dollar that that guy's gonna spend. I I, I, you make I you make a good point. They don't have enough money yet. Because they can. Yeah. That's why I don't have an issue with it. Because they can do it. So deal with it. If you don't like it, yeah, you don't fucking buy it. If you don't, yeah, go to the competitor. Buy indie games. <laughs> I do buy indie That's games. That's true. Oh, on fucking Steam. <laughs> but you gotta make people pay for it. You gotta make it that. Guess what? I've been given EA. A dollar since Origin came out, not a buy. single dollar, because I have a huge issue with that the way they they do things. So that's what you got to do if you don't like it. If you want to, if you really want to stick it to them, start making your own games. There you go, Matt. I have a challenge for you. You really don't <laughs> like it? Don't buy Half Life Three. <laughs> Design design your because own you version of Half Life Three because you can't resell it. That's a game I'd never want to resell. That's a game I'd buy three copies of. <laughs> just, just because. <laughs> okay, man. That's going to pay double just to get a hard copy. <laughs> Answer me this, then, man. Shoot. <laughs> Why can't you resell your copy of Black Mesa? Because I didn't pay anything for it. But it's digital. So it's a I, good. I pay anything for if, it. if a digital good is, is, you should be able to resell it. Hey, if I gave you a chair, you go out and sell it. Yeah, I totally could. So why can't you sell black music? Well, I could if somebody was stupid enough to buy the fucking thing. <laughs> no, they would sue you for it, and they'd be right to do so. <laughs> In any case, I think uh, Matt can't sell a chair. I think we've come to the fact that uh, 
I, I, I don't think that digital distribution for games has really been figured out yet, in my <laughs> opinion. <laughs> the the funny thing is that well people, kind of, the, people kind of uh, have a, accepted it for ebooks and stuff like that. Uh, hey. Like, I, I buy ebooks all the time. I don't even think about the fact that I can't resell hey. it or that I, I can't. I buy stuff on Save all the time. I think it is figured out. You just buy your stuff. It's reasonable, reasonably priced. Right. It makes sense to you and I, the PC gamer, but to right. the rest of the world for console, games. for console players, that's where it's not figured out yet. What yeah. stuff is reasonably priced? Tropico was the games seven fifty. Digital well, on sale, yeah. On sale, I the stuff I buy normally, I think is reasonably priced. It's also it's also no more expensive for me to buy a game on Steam and have a digital copy that I can download anywhere as many times as I want than it is for me to go to an actual store and buy it. So you get the benefit of digital distribution, plus you can get a cheaper game if you already subscribe to the model when they put them on sale. But console players, it's a different story. They I just hate that when I decide, oh, it's been four years, I heard the single player was this for this was pretty good. I, I want to try it out. And then you find out it's an EA game, and you're like, well, fuck. It costs 60 bucks still. Now I can't fucking play it, because I'm not going to pay 60 bucks for a game that's four years old. What if it was still worth 60 bucks, though? Yeah. It's not. Still if, if it was still it was 60, 60 bucks, if the game was old. still $60, it would probably still be worth $60. No. There's a reason games and movies and books all go down in price over time, because it doesn't matter. You're, get, so, you're not going to have a game four years down the line that's still $60. Unless you pull a Disney and hide them in your vault for 15 years. Yeah, unless you Blizzard, stop selling Blizzard it. I have a dis for disagreement with you there, playing on that one. <laughs> <laughs> they do not discount their games ever. Well, yes. But everybody buys them when they're here anyway because they're awesome. They don't discount their games, but third-party retailers discount their games. Yep. Oh, yeah. So, it, yeah, so Steam is a third-party retailer. They can discount games. It's still it, same thing. Yeah. So, in any case, moving on. I guess we're done with that. I don't <laughs> have anything else to say. Uh, just a quick update. We are 27 minutes in. We are winning two yellow cards to none. We are winning? Oh, yeah, we're playing Mexico. Yes, we're playing Mexico. Oh, it's still 0 zero. Mexico! Though. Yeah. I, I think the score is in yellow cards because I love it when it's a physical game, especially against Mexico. It's actually... I was... Uh, one of the guys that I work with, he's a pretty big soccer fan. He was saying Mexico is number 15 in the world right now. Yeah, they're like really good. They're really good. We're winning possession 62% to 38. So That's pretty huge. Yeah, it's a big discrepancy. Nice. So, also, they're playing in Mexico in the Azteca Stadium, where Mexico has lost a total of 11 times since it opened. The last time they lost there was actually last last year against the U.S. That stadium must suck. The stadium is apparently super high in elevation. It's higher than Denver. Denver really? Travel like travels like really far. So somebody get it, that shit up on the screen. What? That stadium? Don't no. watch ESPN, man. Yeah. Here, I'll see if I can find. Not what I'm talking about. Estadio is Teca. Elevation, elevation. <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, what else you got for topics so I can stop complaining about physical versus digital media? All right. Well, anyway, <clears throat> um, I guess uh, Galaxy S4. 
I want one, but I'm still under contract for a year, so... We'll Fuck. do this real quick. Galaxy S4, uh, what was it, announced uh, last week or something like that? New Galaxy mm-hmm. phone. Uh, it's got an 8-core processor, 5-inch display, full HD. Um, and I guess it's supposed to be the phone to end all phones? Anybody... Yeah. I was going to say, that's the only turnoff to me, is how big it is. They, I like it. Big. Uh, I like it. That's, that's what, what she said. said. <laughs> I, I'd like... I don't know. I think a 5-inch display for me is a little too big. I... My phone is a 4.3, and that's almost too big for me. What is the S3? Uh, 4.7, I think. What's this it's, one? I think it's 4.8. Like a 4.3, Matt. Oh, okay. And you said it's going to be what? 5-something? Five 5-inch. Five I, I think I still want the HD. Well, wouldn't that basically just be... If it's about the same size, I guess I didn't realize the S3 was that big. So yeah, 4.8, four you're, you're correct. So isn't it basically just like the size of the other Galaxy S, but the screen takes up more of the space? Yeah. So, yeah, so the Galaxy S4 is basically the Galaxy S3, but with a slightly larger display in the same space and a better processor. Yeah, so it's just it's an upgrade. Just, it's, yeah, it's just hmm. an incremental upgrade similar to what Apple does with, like, the 4, 4S bullshit. When's the new iPhone coming out, and when's Jerry going to get it? I don't even know what that is. The iPhone? What's the iPhone? <laughs> <laughs> is that that they make shit? phones now? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know when the five. I don't know. Is the next iPhone going to be an iPhone six or an iPhone five S? If it's a five S, I think people are going to freak out. Why? Like That's what iPhone they've been too. doing. But there has already been a lot of discontention with the uh, 5 not being all that much different than the 4. Did Jerry get a 5? Yes. You Remember? can do panoramic pictures with it. The 5 yeah. is, is You can do that on the original Galaxy phone. The 5, <laughs> the five is physically a lot different than the 4. If you felt that, you could see has, there's a huge difference. Has Jerry owned both a 4, a 4S, and a 5? I think so. It's lame. I believe he has. How the hell is he gonna, don't they come out a new one like every year? Yeah, they do. Of course they do. You can buy out your contract. You just cost a decent chunk. He of hasn't money. paid off contract for any of his phones. <laughs> he he's actually complained the first. No, actually, I don't think he had a 4s. I think he had a four and a five. You can do this right now. You, you you can you can out him to the carriers, so then they won't put up with this bullshit. So you can actually buy. Uh, T-Mobile had their announcement today uh, for their uncar- uncarrier announcement, where they'll start selling the iPhone five on their network officially. It's ninety nine dollars down, and then twenty bucks a month for twenty four months, which puts the total price of the phone at. Five hundred and eighty dollars, which is Oof. cheaper than what you can buy it straight from Apple from off contract. Did you say on contract? This no, this is still off contract. T-Mobile is still off contract. There's no contracts with that. How much do you pay for the iPhone though on contract? You well, uh, two hundred dollars is the five hundred. Yeah, it's two hundred dollars, yeah. but you're locked into a contract. So you end up right. paying like eight hundred dollars. They averaged it out to be. On so is the advantage of being not in a contract the fact that you're paying less on what the monthly? The month. Yeah, the monthly cost. So how much is data then? Is it still the same? Data so they, I, T-Mobile just updated all their plans. I think the cheapest one is like. 50 bucks a month, I think, for unlimited voice and text and, like, a gig of data or something. Hmm. 
I don't know what it, but the idea is that you can buy uh you can pick what you want and then you're not locked into a contract. You can bring a phone to T-Mobile, you can leave T-Mobile. Um you just pay for your devices full price eventually one way or the other. And then once you're con- once you've reached the uh end of paying off your phone or whatever, it's now a fully unlocked phone. <laughs> This topic is not interesting. Okay. So are you going to buy a <laughs> GS4, Matt? I can't get a phone for another year. Seriously? Seriously. I thought you were coming up close. I think Pat's looking for a new phone, though. Yeah. What are you thinking? HTC One? Yeah, I still like the One. I'm a huge HTC fan. I think the One has got the best design out of any phone out there. By far. I think it's better designed than the iPhone is. I think the iPhone is too lightweight. That's a thing. I, for some reason, like, I like a little bit of feel. You know what I mean? Some you think the iPhones are, are too light? Yes. The 5. Oh, okay, five I was say, because like, the 4s were bulky and heavy. No, the 4 was good. The 5 is too thin and too light. Mm. See, I like the weight of the 4. I still have my 4. Um, the problem is after using a larger display, the three and a half inch display on the iPhone four is terrible. Really it is small. so damn small. Yeah, I'm, um, my phone next me, but I'm I'm used to a bigger four plus screen. So yeah, I I could see the four inch being a bit better. I still think like a four point three inch screen is ideal. That's I, I don't really I don't know if I could ever go up to a five inch display though. So I have the S three and I guess I'm used to it now, but I like the size. I had the original, just Galaxy S, and I think I like the size of that one better just because it wasn't so bulky to carry around as much. Well, yeah. How do you how do you fit that into your pocket? It does fit. I even have a, a case on mine. Huh. I'm just have oh, I can't know. even I'll fit my phone. Stop wearing skinny jeans. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, I wear too many scary jeans. Um. Next. <laughs> I was gonna say something. I forgot what it was. Um. What about one more topic? YouTube. YouTube. Silas wants right. YouTube. What about YouTube? YouTube. What about it? I don't remember where. Oh, there it is. So we're going to. Is oh, go going to so YouTube apparently has rumors that they are going to. I know we talked about this a while ago, but allow you to pay to remove ads from YouTube. And they've also apparently been in talks to get a subscription service for streaming music. I think I would be more inclined to do the streaming music, just because I, I want to. No, I would pay to not have ads. <laughs> I I I don't know. I actually don't have any ads on YouTube, but I probably am blocking them all. I, my question, my big beef with this, I put YouTube videos up all the time, and I am now part of a um, plan where I get paid for right. ads on my videos. Well, my, so, nobody watches them, so it doesn't matter. Well, yeah, that's nobody watches yeah, mine either, so uh, that's why I joined this podcast, so hopefully I could get a little publicity uh, for my YouTube videos. <laughs> but, plug. <laughs> but uh, no, the, um, the, the thing is, for the people who do make a living, and there are a lot of people who make a living doing that because of the ads that they run at the bottom... Um, my question is, are these people getting royalty, are getting part of that pay-in? So if I pay 20 bucks a year to not have ads for YouTube, is that person going to see part of that money? How do they distribute that? Because, like... I would hope so, because these people that, like, especially the people that make really, really high-quality content, that's all they do. They don't even have a fucking normal job. Right. Like, they do YouTube, and that's it. But yeah. their pay is based on number of views. So if 
you're now having people who are subscribing to get rid of the ads. Are they still getting paid based on views? Hey, Good. Some some uh, like pro StarCraft two players stream just playing their games. They claim they make like fifty to sixty thousand dollars a year just from streaming their games for six hours a day. Jesus, I believe it. Are you talking about like on Twitch and stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had a training a couple of weeks ago, and the dude only had just some one-off little video of something with a couple thousand views, and he got like a hundred dollar check, and he's just like, "This is awesome! I would do this all the time." <laughs> See, all you gotta do is have bald eagles make a nest in a tree in the front yard. <laughs> <laughs> what? You can tell me you don't know about the eagle stream app. Wait, what? It was like, was last year, wasn't it? it they've had it a couple times where the eagles have had uh, eggs in their nest, and they've got a webcam up in their tree. Are you talking about the Decora eagles? Yeah. What are you talking about? You could, you, you, could, you could make some money off those. Hey, you remember when the one died and people were in, like, a fucking outrage? Yeah, did you get hit by a car or something? <laughs> like, dude, get over it. It's a fucking bird in the wild and it died. <laughs> what can you fucking do? I had a squirrel yesterday. Cry for it, too. No. <laughs> I didn't really hit a squirrel. In fact, I braked to miss the squirrel. Dude, you guys... Man. Do you guys ever watch the Philip DeFranco show on YouTube? No. No, I'm not watching this game. Because YouTube is sucking lately. I hate it. There are bodies falling everywhere in this game. Really? Yes. Is it killing floor? Is Mexico pissing in cups and throwing urine yeah. yet? Every time I switch to the tab, there's a Mexico player on the ground. <laughs> What is this? What is the show you were talking about, Silas? Oh, the, oh, Philip, oh. the Philip DeFranco show is uh, one of the high quality content videos that uh, that I'm curious about because he has made a regular living. He actually, from doing this YouTube show, he made enough money to start another YouTube show where he hired about five to ten staff people to run. So he's making, and every week he he's handing out new prizes. See, I, I think I don't know if uh, part of his money is coming from sponsorship, but they're only sponsoring because he has so many views. Um, right. It's just he just comments on the news, and he at the end of the show he says you've been filled in, and everyone thinks it's clever, and that's that's about that's about sure. the gist of the show. That's Isn't that future. what we do? Why, should, why shouldn't we be making them thousands of dollars? That's the future, though. Like, yeah, okay, so back in 2010, there was an article on Business Insider that theorized that the top YouTube stars were making 100000 plus per year, and I think that's gone way up now. Yeah. I don't doubt it. Well, what about that, uh, uh, Cy? He made, like, a million dollars or something on YouTube for years. Who did? Cy. Gangnam Style? Gangnam Style. Oh! Yeah. So yeah thought, you, you thought you were talking about Psy the mascot. What yeah. are artists, though? <laughs> what are artists like, what did do? They don't, they don't need to go to big publishers who are going to change their music. You know, they can just do their music online. You know, a lot of, on, on YouTube, for it. whereas <laughs> some of the recording labels were... Uh, like submitting DMCA complaint after complaint after complaint after complaint to get this stuff taken down, some of them finally got their heads out of their asses and realized it wasn't worth their time to go through all this freaking YouTube content and submit a complaint for everyone. And they came to agreements with like YouTube so that if it, they can, somebody can flag it with whatever content or it recognizes that it's XYZ song, and then they get a portion of the ad revenue. Oh, yeah. Yeah, all the all the covers that I put up have have ads on them, and I'm I'm not getting any money from that. That's all going to the uh, to the the copyright owners. So because I'm making them money because it's a cover. Yep. Well, covers are protected by something else, though. Too. I mean, you could you technically aren't copywriting anything by making a cover. 
Well, technically, technically, I'm stealing the copyrights unless I'm paying for uh, royalty plays. And so, if I want to claim it as my own and make money off of it, I have to go in and pay the royalties myself. And the way that YouTube has it set up is that I can go on and I can make a cover and they won't sue me. Uh, but I don't get, I can't try and monetize the video myself. So hmm. they get to, the, the people who own the copyrights for the actual song get the money from what I'm doing. Which is awesome because then people watch my videos because they know the song and I don't have to pay out the wazoo to... Um, play a popular song to cover a popular song on YouTube. So. But at this point, the publicity is worth more than the $5 you would get from that. Right. Yep. However many watches you get off of a cover anyway. Exactly. You know that metal cover guy. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 You're on E Rock. Yep. E Rock, yeah. He's awesome. He, he has, to, he has to have made a shit ton of money, I would think. Yeah. Or none, from what well, I've is it, does, well, does it make money? Well, if there are people, well, if, it depends. If he says, I want to pay for royalties for this much, it's like, you can, if you spend a hundred bucks, you get a thousand plus plays or something like that. Or you get five thousand plays uh, online or streams that you can pay for. So if he wanted to put in, you know, if he wanted to pay a thousand dollars, maybe he'd get. 500,000 to a million views that he knows he's going to stream. And so after that, yeah, he makes a profit off of that. But are, but, aren't like, the, especially the covers that 3 through on e -Rock does, I mean, wouldn't his be so heavily modified that it doesn't even really count as a cover of the original song anyway? Uh, not under fair use agreement. Copyright is, is a ridiculous... Is a ridiculous um, web of stupidity. I, I had to take a, a uh, copyright law class when I was in my journalism major, and that just made me want to never try and mimic anything that anyone else did <laughs> for fear that I would have to pay them for it. So. Well, some of his stuff probably isn't covered, like the Zelda theme song and stuff like that. No, dude, you better believe somebody owns that. Well, I understand, but I don't know if that would be covered under YouTube's. Oh, I see what you're saying. It's like their what I was talking about, their portion of the of covers. Well, it just I mean the the people who own copyrights to music own copyrights to music all in the same place, and so I think that I don't know if YouTube has worked out a deal with BMI. I feel like that'd be the easiest way to have it to have it go down so that the music gets streamed through. Um, anytime you go into a coffee shop or a bar or anywhere that plays radio music, you look on the door outside and it has uh, ACAP or BMI labels on the front of, or AS, ASCP, something. BMI is one of the labels, and that shows up showing you that they're paying royalties. The bar itself is paying royalties to these companies who then pay money to the um, musicians, the artists, yep, and the labels, etc. So that they're, they're acting as, as their middlemen groups, and I don't know if... I feel like I remember hearing YouTube went right to the... Um, labels, but I'm guessing now eventually they've just worked out deals with some of these larger companies because that's the, that's the streamlined way that it would happen easiest. So, so Zelda music is going to show up there just the same. Uh, there, I, when I was looking at uh, how I could make more money off of the YouTube videos, I had to go in and try and figure out where I could buy the copyrights for these things. And there are a couple of websites that you can look it up really easily. And uh, it'll say, this is how much it costs per stream. Or if you want to make a, you know, a CD with a whole bunch of covers that you do of these things, you can sell all these CDs. You can, you can sell the song at, you know, it's like 10 cents a play or something like that. So if you sell your song for a buck, you get 90 cents off of it. But if you sell it through iTunes, iTunes gets 70 cents, and 
they get 10 cents for what you've already spent off of that and then the if you're going through a distributor they get another 10 cents so you really get like five cents off of every song that you sell for a dollar <laughs> that's freaking bad that seems yeah it's not it's not great <laughs> so it, eventually it, it, it pays to write your own songs is what I found out <laughs> eventually they're gonna be no more music labels and it's just gonna be people buying people selling and buying their music directly from their artists which is I mean I like that system they're gonna go to YouTube they're gonna look up the artist because the artist put it up there he's marketing on YouTube and then people see it on YouTube they're gonna go buy it straight from his website I don't know I'm a pretty huge fan of Spotify okay but they don't have everything yeah, especially lot. especially local music and uh, local bands that you might want to listen to. And well, support. that's true, but I don't usually listen to local. Well, some people do. Yeah, so, so real quick then, if uh, you like Spotify, would you also like a YouTube music subscription service? I don't know. What What's would the, be the advantages? Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it's, YouTube has trouble freaking streaming to me at work anyway, but I guess that, I mean, that's probably work throttling it, rightfully so, because they don't want people on YouTube all day eating up all their bandwidth. Well, is it music or music videos? I would assume music is well, kind of what I've been hearing. Because if, oh. if they did music videos... Now, that would be worth paying for a subscription for, I think, especially with the tools that they have on YouTube right now so you can set up your own streams. So you say, I want to do a playlist of these five songs that I like. If you could pay for that so that you set up your own playlists with the songs that are available on YouTube and watch music videos. So I was talking to somebody about this the other day. Hey, let's have a music video party. They have a projector, and we could set up a huge thing, and we just set up a playlist you know, a two-hour, four-hour-long playlist of all the music videos that we want to see that night, but then they all get interrupted by ads. So if you can pay to get rid of the ads, that'd be pretty sweet. The only thing that I can see an advantage for YouTube subscription for me is that, like with Spotify, I can download my playlist ahead of time over the Wi-Fi at home, and I have to use data. Whereas when I'm, like, in my car driving an hour to work and back every day, I don't like to listen to the YouTube music because I don't want to be streaming that data every time I'm traveling. Where yeah. if they if if the YouTube service did something where you could have a download song and then they would keep track of like a play count and then just push that up, you know, once a day. I'd be I'd be okay with that. Because there are there are some artists and some songs and stuff I listen to heavily on YouTube that aren't on Spotify. Yeah, I would guess that if YouTube came out with a service like this, that it would allow you to do some sort of downloading, downloading a playlist or something to your phone so that you don't have to constantly be streaming. Because, you know, as you're driving, streaming sucks. Yeah. I mean, Not really. It, it can if you're dropping in and out of poor coverage areas. Well, yeah, if you're in the boonies. My drive to work, I have my phone, if I'm talking on my phone... From when I leave to when I get to work, there are four spots where my phone will cut out. That's because you're not driving on 80 across the state. Oh, yeah. Well, I understand, but I'm just saying, like, I even I can, I can see a cell phone tower, and my phone will cut out. It doesn't mean it's your cell phone tower. Yeah. I yeah. Know. Well, I'm in, Kansas, I'm in Kansas City, and my phone will cut out regularly. Who's your carrier? Verizon. Anthony, who's yours? U.S. Cellular. What? U.S. Cellular has bad signal in Iowa? Yeah. How? <laughs> I, I don't know. It's weird. And then the, there'll be some days where we'll be just fine. And then there'll be others where it'll cut out in the exact same spot every day. The only issues I have with mine, and I'm Sprint, is if I go away from, like, the main routes, so if I'm out in the middle of fucking nowhere... And uh, if I'm inside the buildings at work because we don't, it, it's like a Faraday cage. It just kills your signal. Hmm. Other than that, I've, I really don't have any problems with connection ever. 
The three G isn't especially fast, but yeah. But still, a lot of people are going to be. If you're going to be doing a s streaming service, a lot of people put music on their phones to listen to when they're on an airplane, when they're mm -hmm. driving in the long distances. I mean, there, there's going to be lots of times where somebody is not going to have access to data on their phone. Yeah, uh, and they will want to have that. So I, I can't imagine them launching a service without that built in. Yeah. I just don't see. I can. I just don't see why you would want, <laughs> a, unless it was like a dollar. I would only pay a dollar for that. That's what it's worth to me. <laughs> <laughs> I already pay for Spotify. Every month, so. You, I, I don't. The YouTube version better be providing something that Spotify doesn't. The only thing I could think that they would provide is more artists or different artists. I and Spotify maybe they already has so many. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> but but the, with it leaning towards the more popular, whereas YouTube has stuff that's more indie and up and coming. You can find some pretty obscure shit on oh, Spotify. Yeah. I agree. Well, and, and I also have artists who I think are fairly popular that are not on Spotify, which kind of makes me angry. You're or probably like, like the only fan. I know. No, I think there is. There's, there's quite a few. All right, get out. See you, Pat. Adios. Peace. I, I think there are probably. I think there are quite a few actually popular artists that are not because of the label has not made a deal with Spotify or something yet. Yeah. I mean, it's hit and miss, and or sometimes they'll, you know, the artists will be there, but only two of their songs will be up. Right. And it's two of the ones that are maybe the more popular, but they're not my favorite song. What was the big deal? Was it, uh, who wasn't that wasn't on iTunes forever? Was it the Beatles? Yeah. Yeah. They were never on iTunes because they could never reach an agreement on how much they wanted paid or some shit. Right. And I think that you're gonna have you're gonna have artists like that in in any of these streaming services as well. Yeah. I and mean, if you can't even if you can't make a deal with Apple, who is actually selling you the songs, how are they gonna come to a deal with a streaming service that is selling the songs for less? So I don't know. It'll be interesting. I don't, maybe I I don't know. I kind of like Silas's idea. What if it's not really a streaming music service, but more of a you pay to get rid of the ads and you make a you know it's re regular YouTube you make a playlist and you just pay for ads so you don't have to listen to ads in between all your songs or something like that. I mean that's essentially what Spotify is. That's why I pay for Spotify so I don't have to sit through an ad. Right. Exactly. The worst part about it though is I don't have any freaking signal at work so I can't listen to my Spotify radio. <laughs> Can you not can you not put it on your work computer? No. First world problems. This is why Spotify needs. We want to talk app. about the first thing that's blocked by the filter. It's going to be the music streaming sites. Yeah. Why can't you just hack it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why don't you just build your own sprint cell? Let cell me hack it so when people's Facebook accounts get hacked. <laughs> no. I we'll changed see. your status. I hacked you so hard. Oh, you left your computer unlocked. You got hacked, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess that could be... I changed your background. You got of hacked. ...social engineering, just waiting for somebody to leave their machine yeah. unlocked and then dick around with it. But I, I wouldn't describe... <laughs> Backing somebody's Facebook account by them being logged in still and you changing their status to be your hacked bro. <laughs> <laughs> you got hacked, bro. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Exactly. So no, you can't hack the system. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> hack the planet. Well, see, my my computer's unlocked at work. I just downloaded Spotify onto my onto my desktop, and I just play it every day. Yeah, well, you don't work at a company with twelve thousand people all trying to listen to Spotify at the same time. <laughs> well, I did get told by some one of my coworkers who's kind of younger. He's like, "Ooh, don't let our IT guy see you." He's like, "You'll you'll." He's kind of gets. 
pissed when people are streaming stuff, and I was like, "Is it against policy? He should no, add, he should put a filter." In place. I've, I've I looked actually. There's no. Well, then they then, don't have any. Then I would call him to. into your office and be like, "Do you like this song? <laughs> <laughs> Do you like this song, bro?" <laughs> That would be a really computer, good song too. I'm... Like, ha- have it be. Uh, uh, I don't know who's the like a band that Rage Against the Machine or something. <laughs> so you're like sticking it to the man. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, this is. I was also told from the same person, like, like, oh yeah, we just use Internet Explorer. Or again, the IT guy really doesn't like Chrome and stuff or whatever. <laughs> or doesn't doesn't like people using Chrome on the computers. And the first thing I installed when I found out that my computer was just there. There's no restrictions except a few sites are blocked, like Facebook and Twitter. Chrome is the first thing I always install, and now it's biting me in the ass because some of the pages I've written only look good in Chrome and don't function well in IE7. Yeah. Actually, did you hear that uh, new version of Internet Explorer? They're gonna. Ten. Be, it, yeah. Well, the newest, the one that Microsoft has not come out with yet. Ten. Ten is yeah, out. Ten. Okay. Well, then whatever. <laughs> Continue. They're uh, apparently changing the user agent script so that it reports itself as uh, like a Firefox browser. Really? Yep. So well, that. I mean, all, all, why? I guess. Basically, so that the the rumor is that they're doing it because they want to get rid of their legacy support for apps, and so that they can block. Uh, legacy whatever the hell code and stuff like that is from running. Well, I know I had one issue even on my Google site going between Chrome and Firefox and IE there like some of my stuff was all alignment I had alignment issues. Yeah, welcome to my fucking life. <laughs> yeah, it's quite <laughs> annoying. Class. I don't. I'm finding uh, the Internet Explorer 10. I'm finding that it is much, much, much better it's, than it's uh, than the previous versions. Internet Explorer I, eight and nine weren't even that bad. It's seven that's terrible. Yeah, nine was decent. Ten is significantly better. I actually my backup browser is not Firefox anymore. It's Internet Explorer. I'm having to write a bunch of CSS code to get around Internet Explorer seven. Not rendering things properly. It's Internet a huge Explorer should be banned. Yes. Microsoft should remote delete it from every computer in the remote world. Remote delete it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> and the worst part about it is, is that it's not even Internet Explorer Seven that you we're running, but on intranet sites, sites within yeah. your own network that aren't on an external domain, it forces it to compatibility mode, which yeah. renders the documents in uh, Internet Explorer 7 document mode. It's pretty awesome. And it makes some of the JavaScript I've written not work, so I had to find workarounds for that, like custom JavaScript modules to replace uh, 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 JSON serialization. Because you can't do JSON dot serialize on Internet Explorer 7 for some god-awful reason. It's kind of like a feature, Matt. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, the feature is drive me nuts. <laughs> exactly. Well, I think that's probably the it for this week. Let's uh, shut it down. I think we've slowly gotten off the track. But we've been like an hour and a half. It's it's true. So Ryan yeah. Thurman's gonna have fun watching this one. <laughs> If if he ever gets this far, if you haven't killed yourself by now, I have. I haven't stopped eating the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what's worse: if you've been listening to this for an hour and a half, or that Matt was eating for an hour and a half. <laughs> and I've lost weight. <laughs> Well, in any case, we will uh, see you guys all next week.